Good day. This is Amy K. Gaskin, and you're watching um, Ask Amy About Aging. And today I am speaking with Christine um, about result, resisting cults, conspiracies, and abusive partners. So Christine X. Smith, welcome to Ask Amy About Aging. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Thank you, Amy. I, um, I was a court-appointed guardian in the District of Columbia for seven years. My client base was basically elderly people who were found in distress and a guardianship was submitted by somebody, either the hospital, family member, or even the city mm -hmm. to get them the help that they needed. Perfect. And that, that's my background. My, my writing, my substack, christineaxmith.substack.com, is about dark persuasion. It includes the tactics used to manipulate people into taking their money or taking their freedom. Ah, so we have a lot we can talk about um, on many podcasts, but um, today let's um, dive right in and why don't you tell us a little bit about um, how to prevent things like this from happening, especially to the elderly. Well, thanks. People need, um, people need help when they get older, but you want, I've, I've heard so many stories about people getting taken advantage of and particularly let's talk about, um, caregivers. Yeah. It's a big one. Yes. But you can, and I'm also an attorney, you can structure a caregiving contract mm -hmm. in such a way that the person is part of the agreement is they're never allowed to move in and they agree in advance that they never move in mm -hmm. and also have a set list of what they have to do mm -hmm. uh, because you want a signed agreement and you want them to be bonded yeah, I talk about that a lot, especially even people that want to get into the caregiving business. I say, you know, you want you want an agreement to protect yourself and the senior. But on the flip side, um, they go in um, and they can actually take advantage of the senior by stealing stuff or getting close to the senior and convincing the senior that they're the ones taking care of them. So they should get the inheritance. So it's scary for people. So, you know, I'm anxious to hear about what your advice would be um, for that. It's interesting because a lot of people, a lot of seniors, um, they do get stolen from or they imagine they've been stolen from. Well, that's the, that's the flip side of it. They, they think exactly. They and, and they really haven't. They just misplaced something. And, of course, the family is going to believe the senior at first. And then all of a sudden the daughter comes over to put the underwear away and there it is sitting in the drawer, you know. Well, this is the thing you told me the caregiver stole or the housekeeper stole and it's right here or yeah. Yeah. or it's even in weird places like kitchen items in the bathroom and stuff like that so yeah so it happens yeah so you want a signed agreement mm -hmm. really working through an agency is a good idea right and yeah it's going to cost a little more but you get protections through that mm -hmm. um you identify their role in specifically the hours that they're there and what tasks they're supposed to perform while okay. they're there. I, this happened in, with a family member. They just didn't want to wash her hair or get her dressed. And I really threw a fit because that, that matters. It does. Sitting around in your underwear all I'm not underwear in her pajamas yeah. all day is depressing. It is, yeah, and it, then, then you start to have her hair hard. Hard. right? So there, there are definite things about what their role is and the limits of the role, and also specifically put in your agreement no moving in. So yeah. they're bonded, and there's no moving in or getting on the. Can you put in there? You're not going to be getting any inheritance. Well, they agree in advance yeah. that there will be no inheritance or transfer of money other okay, than okay. wages. 
perfect. And that's why using an agency is a, a really good idea. Right. Um, because it helps manage that. And also no visitors, no family members while you're taking, while you're working. If you're working, say 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., you can't have family members drop by. Right. Or friends. Um, I've seen it where they spend a lot of time on the phone. Let's just say, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that's not the worst. That's not the worst. No, that's not the worst. It, it really isn't. You need the basic tasks of care taken care of, mm -hmm. you know? And so in terms of a written agreement, that is, those are the main points that I would put in there. Okay. And, um, and that, uh, you make sure they don't move in. That's the big one. Yeah. Cause they spend a lot of time convincing them that they're the, they're the ones taking care of them, um, your loved ones. So they, they're the ones that should be doing, you know, getting all the money and they should do stuff. And then you end up trusting them too much. Um, and it's a shame, especially when families, you know, they, they can't necessarily move in or they can't get closer and they can't be the one that can't be the family caregiver because they have to work. So it's very important to know things that, like this ahead of time. And that's awesome advice. And exactly. And so that's why having these agreements in writing in advance. And also there are often laws that limit how much a caregiver can inherit. And in the District of Columbia, it's $30,000. Yeah, but I mean, there's, no, there's no reason. And then most of those people that uh, if you've only, only took care of them for two months and all of a sudden get $30,000, that's just kind of crazy. And then, of course, that's that's a problem, too. Um, something that can be done is to have a visit, visit the elderly person. Mm -hmm. Even if you're far away, there's something called a supervising social worker. Okay. You drop by once a month. Oh, so you can, it's a part-time thing, but you will have somebody who is a professional and a professional at assessing services drop in and assess the situation and make sure nothing is going off the rails that the elderly person is properly taken care of. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, any, uh, yeah, any other suggestions on other um, things like um, you, you have this whole thing on resisting cults, conspiracies, you know? Yeah. Well, dark persuasion is yeah. what I call dark it. Persuasion. And okay. People who are alone and vulnerable are susceptible to dark persuasion. Right. Not so much cults. Because right. Cults want young younger people. people. Yeah, younger people. But in dark persuasion, this is what I would do. Mm -hmm. And I'm really on the verge of doing it for my parents. There's something called a pirate radio. Oh. And you, well, not conventionally pirate radio means you can, uh, you illegally put up a radio station. <laughs> but there's, there's other services that you can apply to a phone number. And for $5 a month, they intercept all spam calls. Oh. So I might even get it for myself because yeah, I mean, I, yeah. make, I, get, I get 10 calls a day. Yeah. And, and sometimes if you're in a, like a really, depending on the time of day, the phone call comes in if something just happened and all of a sudden you're stressed over something and all of a sudden, Oh, I'm going to give you all this money. Oh, really? And, and in, under normal circumstances, you'd be like, click. But when you're, if something recently happened, especially, with, oh, my kids are in trouble. I could get this money and help take care of these kids, my kids and all this stuff. So these con artists are out there and, and they get to the elderly. It's an entire industry. Right. And so that's why. And, and what is fun about this service is it kicks them into an audio loop where they think they're talking to someone, but really they're just talking to a machine. Ah. So they've got a couple of scenarios. They've got one with an old man who brags about his daughter 
and then it has a bunch of ducks running through his kitchen. <laughs> but they audio tape it for you so you can listen to them waste right. your time. So every month you get a audio tapes of these people and they, they get really mad. Um, and they have another one where it's a distracted mother of a teenage daughter trying to get her daughter to wear a sweater to go outside. Oh, that's, that's normal. Exactly. And so they, they have but that one is just kind of like way off the wall. So I, I'd like to see a con artist kind of finagle about that. Well, see, and they do, and they do try, you know, and, and now they, 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 some of them get, the you can go on YouTube and listen to some of these audios. Yeah. So that would be something I recommend doing. And it's five dollars a month. I mean, it's or, or about that. That's that's amazing. I think I want to get it for myself. For myself, I'm of an age where I'm getting these calls. If you're over fifty, they've sold your information to scammers. They've got these phone banks all over the world, shall we say? And um, that's what they do. Right. So that what that's one way to protect. You know, and I, I keep trying to educate the seniors that I know. You know, and saying, you know, you got to be extra careful and you got to make sure, you know, who you're opening your door to. Um, I like the ring doorbell idea, because especially if it goes to the adult child as well, yeah. because I want to see who's coming into my mom's house. And I want to know Absolutely. when my mom's door opens up or my loved one's door opens up, because if it opens up at a weird time, I want to be able to intervene no matter where I am. Mm -hmm. And there are there are platforms out there that do that. Um, in fact, Family Care Space at Home does that. So, you know, an adult child or anyone in a care circle can get an alert when the front door opens, for instance. Um, but I really like the the call intercept where they go to a loop. That just kind of is it's kind of. Oh, you get the audio tape. Yeah, yeah, because it's it's cool and fun. It protects your family, plus it also gives you a, a good laugh. Because, yeah, you get to hear them. I, I listen. They're all over YouTube. You can listen to hours of this. Uh, my husband and I did that. For, yeah. We went on this tear for a couple of weeks. It was hysterical. Yeah. You know, um, one guy was seven minutes. He's like, he would just talk to his coworker. He said, oh, my God, I've been talking to a robot for, for seven minutes. Like, because he kept trying to get the old guy to focus. Yeah. You know? Or, oh, or something. So it really is fun, but there there are things that that you can do to mm -hmm. kind of um, because and this is what I talk about with coercive persuasion and coercive control, which right. is more of an abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. It happens when you're vulnerable, which um, is you fall into that are aging, disabled, aging, disabled. Um, you're a young person who's starting college across the country and have no friends. Exactly. And you're this is before you, you're trying to go out into the world for the first time and you move across country, whether you're going to college or not. It doesn't matter what age you are. You have to protect yourself. Um, you know, it's just phases everyone goes through, especially, you know, when you talk about someone vulnerable, you know, they could just be having a really bad day. You know, it could be anybody having a bad day, no matter what their age are. You know, if you feel alone in the world and you get this call and, and if you're sitting home alone and you're a senior, you're certainly going to get a call. You, you want to just talk to people. Um, you know, when I was working um, at a place for mom helping seniors, I would, you know, call all my seniors at least once a month to check in on them. And sometimes they didn't want to stop talking. And, you know, I have to take notes so I can remember for next time, you know, things that I, you know, they talked about because uh, I want them to be, I mean, if I talk to like 30 or 40 different people in the course of, you know, seniors, uh, the stories start getting molded, that were melded, but it was, yeah, they just, they're lonely. And so they're very vulnerable. They are vulnerable. And um, I wrote, uh, I wrote an article about Manti Teo, who was the Hawaiian football player that was catfished where someone pretended to be his a girl online connected with him and he thought he had a girlfriend for two years and he was a nationally known college football player and it really it came out eventually mm -hmm. uh, and it was it was a national issue because no one had heard of catfishing before right 
But the analysis is, my analysis, it can happen to anyone. Right. And you shouldn't be embarrassed about it, but you should absolutely get help about it. And we should absolutely report it. No, no, and I just, I want to point out. Yeah. The fertile ground is vulnerability. Even as one of the top football players in the country with an international, definitely national recognition. Right. And that is, that is after a loss. It's after, in this case, he moved across the country to a, a radically different culture. He was Hawaiian mm -hmm. and he moved to an Irish Catholic culture. Oh, and wow. in Notre Dame, Catholicism has a lot to do with the social and, and cultural environment. And he was a Mormon. So oh. he was disconnected from the large family where he got all his support he was disconnected from the culture he was used to which was heavily mormon and he was disconnected from from the weather he was used to yeah because you're talking boston right notre dame yes yeah exactly so so he was very cast off and then what he thought was a girl with his background um and his religion connected, contacted him, and friended his friends, and worked her his way, but her way into his Facebook social circle. Oh wow! And this is a guy who had a lot of social clout, right? And a, any ability to to meet women that he wanted, um, but he was feeling alienated, right? So. It, that is my point. It can happen to anyone. And um, with cults, the same thing. It's a, a recent death. But there are um, steps that, that people go through to get pulled into an, a, a financially or physically abusive relationship, mm -hmm. a cult, or conspiracy theories. And uh, one of them is isolation. Right, which the, unfortunately the, the seniors are and and people that- They can do something about that. Right, and that's one of the reasons why you wanna make sure you stay connected. Um, and that's why when I, I talk to seniors, I'm like, make sure you have a really good care circle and make sure you know who's in your care circle and run things by them, you know, when you have something new, you know, and I talk, I talked to them, I said, it can even be, you know, an extra neighbor, family, friends, you got to have people that are on your side that you can confide in and talk to. And if you're sitting home alone, you know, that's not good. It's not good. I'm going to suggest uh, every place has um, activities for mm -hmm. older people like the villages right uh which is different from place to place but you can go with other people and have exercise <coughs> excuse me exercise. <coughs> exercise classes um art classes little lectures so and, and then if you're you belong to a religion to attend uh worship services there if you're so inclined Right. There's a lot of you know, a lot of towns um, like I know here in central Florida, you know, you have the Fran Carlton Center in Apopka. You have um, advanced um, senior center in um, Kissimmee and the Osceola Council on Aging and, you know, the libraries, they all have activities for seniors and they're all free. Um, sometimes you have to pay two bucks for, you know, to have lunch there. Sometimes lunch is even free. Um, it depends on the place, but they have them all across the country. Um, and you just have to look, it's usually through um, the department of parks and recreation. Um, so, you know, to, to Google that. And, you know, if, if there's listeners out there that, you know, are lost and don't know how to find those places, mm -hmm. you know, get a hold of me, um, through Facebook, whatever, um, LinkedIn and say, you know, Hey, this is where I live. What are the um, opportunities for me in the area for senior activities? And isolation happens in more than one way. You can be surrounded by people, but then get isolated in terms of online activity. Yeah. That's where people fall into conspiracy theories. 
yeah, the internet's a dangerous place for anyone at any age, teenagers as well as seniors. And there's more and more seniors out there that are um, on the internet exploring because it's their only way, especially during COVID. There was a lot of online activities that seniors could do with places they were doing live activities with. And now they're doing online activities through Zoom. Um, they were doing online exercise classes, just like you and I would be just are, are doing this right now, but they would be exercising and but yeah, so I mean, there's, and, but there's the scams and you, you know, you start reading through Facebook in the middle of the night, that's the most dangerous time because you're tired and you're reading through things and something sounds too good to be true. It probably is. And you probably shouldn't be clicking on it. Okay. I also recommend um, this kind of dark persuasion and coercive control when it comes to cults or scam artists, people seeking to take advantage of you. It's not just isolation, but especially with conspiracy theories, it's constant repetition. Yeah. So one of the things to do is turn off your phone for a day. I did that actually on Wednesday. Yeah. I turned off my phone for maybe 18 hours. Okay. And I wrote about the experience of that and how it really did change my perceptions mm -hmm. and how aware I became of the constant beeping of my phone. I turned off all audible notifications except phone calls on my right. phone. It, because I realized, what is this? I get beeped at all the time? Yeah. And, and it's constantly. Day without getting beeped at. Yeah. It, it, and and it, the first reaction is I'm going to go, oh, well, who, what's, who's calling after me now? I was addicted to a game and it, there was times of the day you had to be on to do different things. And I got a new social circle. I made, I made a really good friend there, that, but there's a lot of people that were total awful. And then finally I said, I'm not doing this anymore. And I, I deleted it. And my husband's like, are you serious? You're done, you're done playing with that game? I said, yeah, because it's occupying too much of my life. Exactly. And there's a psychology behind the alerts that it's supposed to trigger a bit of an endorphin rush so that you keep going back. But the same technique is being used by cults and um, conspiracy theorists. And this is all about making money. That's what it's about. Right. So there's something called a fear up technique in interrogation where they scare you, they scare you, they scare you, but then they give you an out. And in terms of criminal interrogation, that means you can relieve this pressure if you just confess. And that of course leads to false confessions sometimes. Right. If it's not done well, but, um, it, the same thing is being done with when they call you and tell you your grandchildren are in danger. Yeah, you that's can a solve the problem by giving us money or the lizard people in human suits. The lizard people in human suits are ruling the world. Yeah. And you start reading that over and over again. You start to believe it. It's a kind of hypnosis, the repetition. And the same thing happens with religious cults and political ones where it's the repetition is um, a form of hypnosis. So if you wanna make yourself safe, turn off your phone. Oh, TV too. I mean, there's and a lot TV, of conspiracy exactly. with TV. They, they say, especially with people with dementia and stuff, they shouldn't be watching the news or um, you know stuff because they're, they're gonna get panicked, et cetera. Um, they don't even TV shows. So they, they, you get to the point where you don't know what's reality and what's fantasy. And um, I met this gentleman from Maine. He does this whole dementia TV program that's absolutely amazing. And it's a 24 hour a day programming that assisted livings can use, but you can install it in your family's house as well. It's amazing. Wow. So have, yeah. And it also has music and everything else. What, what's it called? I um, want to look at it. It's called, I think it's called Dementia TV. But what I'll do is um, I can email it to you after. Um, I'm going to have him on the show. His, his name is, I think it's. 
name is Alan, um, but he is in Maine. Um, memory TV or memory lane. It's something like that, but I, I will get it to you. Um, Cause I'd okay. like to you guys. Um, and it's an, he's an amazing man. And I, I can't wait to have him on my show as well. Um, that's another topic. Cause that's, you know, big as people with memory loss, but um, yeah. And then of course, um, probably I will do it at another time, but you know, people can abusive partners that can be abusive family members. It can be abusive other people where they take advantage of people, you know, and how do you pre prevent that as a, you know, if you have a, a family member that's trying to scam, uh, you know, another family member out of their money or out of inheritance and there's, how do you protect everyone in the family? You know, how do you protect mom's money? How do you do that? You know. Isolation is really the first step in all of these processes. Right. So do they isolate you with fear and conspiracy theories or do they isolate you with um, repetitive hypnotic messaging? But the same thing. Now I, I, I'd like to finish. The same thing is about, um, caregiver or family abuse now right. what that you do i know i know in the district of columbia mm -hmm. you can uh rely on the city if you file a guardianship petition and have a court appointed guardian you can get that money back really well you can yeah because i know because what, what happens i've seen it happen in many families over the years that you know one family member start, you know, passes away, and then this other family member comes in and is all over the widow or widower, and they isolate that person from the rest of the family and get them paranoid about things, and they're doing it to almost like groom them. And oh, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, they're grooming them into believing that this other person is is doing stuff that they're not doing, and you shouldn't talk to them and. And then they try to get the rest of the family involved in alienating someone just so they can have access to everything. And yeah, and that's why that's why you would have a, a guardianship. Mm -hmm. You would yeah. have a guardianship. You would file for guardianship at that point. Right. Although that's very hard for some people to do. But yeah. if you because who, who wants to do that, get their mom upset? But yeah, because exactly. everyone upset. Then you think, you know, the person that's applying for the guardianship, trying to protect that person, kind of looks like they're the one that's coming in, and then they make them believe that it's the wrong person that's hurting them. Well, you got to toughen up. Are you going to take care of your mom, or aren't you? That's right. So, toughen up, Buttercup. Yep. Sometimes it's ugly. It is. And uh, you want to take care of your mom and make sure they have they have money. Then that's what you do. If you want to take care of yourself, there are ways of setting up trusts. So that really can't happen. OK. Something else. Well, if, if they have the money in their account, say a widow. Yeah. And I've been recently widowed. I, under, I understand that. I'm sorry for your loss. Um, that. Well, it's hard to say because if their name is on the account, the bank is not going to tell you if a big check has right. been. But if they're older, you could try to find the bank statements. Right. You can find the bank statements or log in online. Uh, yeah, log in online. Um, it's not uncommon for the person who's grooming or taking advantage of the elderly person to uh, change all that. It's just, it's all, I can't believe people would do that. And it happens every day. And I, I, I spent over a decade listening to families and, and talking to families. And some of them are so loving and warm and they would do anything for their parents. It doesn't matter the cost. They're, they're even going to kick in. Other people are like, this is my parents' money. I got to put it on Medicaid and put them in some nursing home. I'm like, your mother's not even appropriate for a nursing home. Right. She's assisted living and she doesn't yeah. qualify for Medicaid. I said, she can live comfortably. She can even get the veterans benefit because your father was a veteran. Right. But yet you want to have all the money for yourself. So they can't have anything for themselves. And so it's, it's sad. It is sad. And 
that's why when I hear people say, well, I think, you know, family should take care of it. It's families are the problem. They are. Families are sometimes much you need a third person to step in. And families sometimes are the problem. And yeah. that's why having a court appointed guardian or conservator who's a lawyer is great. Because then yeah. they're like, okay, now I have all these this information. What happened here? What happened here? We're going to get that money back. Yeah, we're going to straighten the situation out. And the reason you want to do something about it is then you're creating a record of how they've behaved. Yeah. And then they they won't be able to get um, a surety ship in the future. They won't be able to get um, bonded in the future. There's insurances that they won't be able to get. Right. This will follow them around. And maybe you won't get the money back, but you'll put a stop to it. And yeah, and no more would be taken. What they did a matter of public record. Now, I do want to say something. At this yep. point, and this is something I observed. You have one adult child who's basically living with the parent and taking care of them. Yeah. And then you have some remote child who isn't doing anything, but. Wants half of mommy's money. No, that is yeah. not it is basically accusing the caretaker which is a full-time job right accusing the caretaker of being a lazy bum who's just sponging yeah. off with mom it happens all the time it happens all the time and that's when i tell people you know what that 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 child needs to come visit for the weekend or a week while i'm on vacation and take care of mom while i'm gone and you'll find out exactly two what weeks. it is exactly it's gotta be more than a week it's gotta be two weeks you're absolutely right and, and the first the weekend or the week is the first is is the icing, and then you really get into the nitty gritty after the second week. Yeah, exactly. Right. And so it's usually a remote sibling who's successful and would never compromise their career to take care of mom. But at the same time, they wouldn't want to spend the amount of money it takes for um, at home care, or let alone a nursing home. Exactly. Or living. So. I think that's um, that's a problem too. That we really need to respect caregivers. We do, and there's not enough respect for them, and they're overworked, especially now since COVID, and they're now they're now even more vulnerable. But caregivers, uh, family caregivers in particular, they don't know how to take care of themselves, and they're usually taking care of kids. They're taking care of their parents. They're working part time sometimes on top of it all, trying to juggle it all. And then they have the pressure come down from the rest of the family. And it's, it's sad. I would recommend is write down every the hours you work mm -hmm. and what you did. So when it comes time for the estate, you can submit a bill to the estate. Oh, that works. Save up. Right. And, and people don't get that. And um, that's a, a great tip. Um, and they should be journaling it anyway. Um, because, you know, especially if they're having a rough day and I've had a lot of family caregivers that have, um, emailed me saying, Hey, I've got advice for family, for other families going through what I went through. And now that I've come out the other side, I realized the mistakes I made and I want to prevent people from making those mistakes. And so it's very helpful, you know, when you have gone through it before. It is helpful, um, because you should treat it like a job. It is and a job. I would further take. And there are programs that can pay you through Medicare that, and you can I know. get certified to take care of your own parents and pay for it. And people are like, well, why should you get paid to take care of your parents? They won't get paid to take care of you. And I say, and then, and then you say, this is what I would suggest. I would suggest calling the remote family and say, I need to take two weeks off. So, why don't you arrange for um, a care agency to be there for the two weeks? And right. when they see that bill, it will bring them more into reality. Yeah, it does. A lot of it is emotional. It is. It's, it is very emotional. And you have to have the other. When I worked at um, a place for mom, I would insist on getting all the family members involved, even if it meant I had to get on a conference call at 10 or 11 at night. 
um, and talk to everyone at once and put everyone in everyone's shoes. I made them all tour places in their own hometowns and, and buy them, whether mom was going to move there or not, because I wanted them to experience and see what it was like um, for the one that was actually doing it. And sometimes they ended up moving to a different location because they realized that the environment was going to be better for mom. And, you know, it really helped to have everyone on the same page. That, uh, that kind of collective decision-making is great. It really right. is. Yeah. So, and, and sadly, uh, the prosecution of this kind of elder financial abuse is just, it's only really just starting. Yeah. Now, BC is pretty progressive in taking care of the elderly. Mm -hmm. And they have a whole setup where auditors will come in, do an audit, and subpoena you. They have subpoena power. and But places like Virginia are really not. So a lot of, a lot of places just are not as developed. Right. And I think D.C. has more of a communal attitude towards taking care of people. So right. that if you see an elderly person wandering around, and you know they live in the neighborhood and they're incredibly thin with dirty clothes, you yourself can call Adult Protective Services. Right. And and I, I encourage people to do things like that all the time, especially if they're your neighbors. You need to look out for your neighbors. Back in the day, everyone looked out for their neighbors. Everyone knew their neighbors. I remember that, you know, Halloween, we would go trick-or-treating and stuff. And there was always that mean old lady and everything. But when I got older, I got to know that mean old lady and she wasn't a mean old lady. She was the nicest person that you'd ever want to talk to. And and so when I when I was growing up, when I had kids, I made sure that we asked the our elderly neighbors, you know, can we do something for you? Because the connection there, because and they're not going to get old, they're not going to get crotchety when a ball goes in their yard if they know you. But if you don't, if you ignore them, you know, but you got to make sure that they're taken care of, too. And, and alternatively, I was talking to a gentleman who lives in an over 55 community. He was like 95 and um, one of his neighbors passed away and she was uh, in her home for four days before anyone noticed. And, and 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 I said, well, and he says, well, so they now had a community meeting and said, hey, she used to walk every day. So the minute we didn't see her two days in a row, that should have been a trigger. The minute you didn't see her one day, that should have been a call. You know, you have to watch out for your neighbor. Um, and then one, one last question, you know, I've heard in many states that when, uh, a, when someone dies um, and the spouse is surviving, they should not make any major financial or decisions or living decisions for at least a year. Agreed. You know, it, um, I, I agree uh, completely. Um, I, you, don't, you don't make any more than a year. It could it's, be more than a year. Like, Especially major decisions, like, you know, doing something that you and your spouse have decided you weren't going to do for a while or changing things drastically um, to the way that you were going to do things because all of a sudden now you're fearful of things and there's no reason to be, you know. Yeah, it's a um, sudden and catastrophic loss makes us afraid. And that's where we're getting more into the reptile part of our brain and not the cognitive part of our brain. Yeah. So we shouldn't be making decisions and, you know, you should surround yourself with people, not just family and friends, but people that are professionals like attorneys and stuff that can make sure that you're not making those really big decisions. And, and when you're in a really vulnerable state and people know that they read, a, they read the obituary and then they're going to, they're going to go after that person. Con artists and scam artists. I agree. Um, what you would need is obviously a living will, but also to talk to, to someone, a lawyer to advise you on setting up your estate, whether you should have a living trust or something like that. Right. So that your assets are taken care of. 
and plan ahead so you know what's going to happen. So this is what happens if I die first. This is what happens if you die first. This is, you know, this is what's going to go on. That way we can protect each other now so that five or 10 years from now or even less, but we want to plan ahead. You don't want to do this after the fact, correct? Um, abs absolutely. Um, I'm thinking I'm thinking back to the bank where you could talk to the bank and say, you know, um, if there's a withdrawal of my account over this amount of money, I want an alert to go to this person, this person. Yeah. Or don't let anything at that, at that kind of a, a withdrawal of a large amount happen. Just say, oh, the money's frozen. You can't do it. You have to plan ahead for a week and get permission or something. Can you do that? No. It depends. I mean, certainly um, with a Merle Lynch account, not to sell anything. Um, right. You, you, you could do something like that. Oh, good. Well, I can't wait to have you back on my show again because there's a million questions I have um, for you, and I'm sure that many people have. Um, but it was awesome having you on today. Thank you. Thank you for asking me. Yeah. And so I want to do this. So you can learn more um, at Christine X Smith's uh, X Smith dot, dot substack dot com. And I can't talk today, but <laughs> um, so that's on the bottom of the screen. Again, this is. I'm Amy Gaskin, Aging Maven Aficionado, and I'm joined today with Christine Axsmith. And thank you so much for coming on. Um, any last minute words for our viewers? Yeah, um, you have control. The, the key is to have no isolation, have several places where you get community. Community is the inoculation. That's why joining a religious group and at the senior center and uh, family members is important. Wonderful. Thank you again so much um, for coming and on. I want to say, if yes. you're afraid of being taken advantage of or that someone may, just don't open your wallet. Yeah. That's because I've seen old ladies string con artists along. Yeah. Because by God, she would not open her wallet. <laughs> There you go. Like, because she and she was, you know, she, mentally she was going, but by God, you were not going to get a dime out of her, you yeah. know, no matter what the sob story, you know. So if you, you don't have to live in fear, you don't have to just don't open your wallet and they'll go away. There you go. If you that's go. what it's about. That's what it's about. Well, thanks again, Christine. And I look forward to um, talking to you again soon. Thank you. All right. Talk to you soon.